Good afternoon all, CamelbackTrading.org, coming to you this Friday afternoon, October 21st. We are looking at Window Trader's market profile of the ES Inspire. We have a lot to get to. We're going to be recapping all three of these indices charts. Wow, what a week. What an interesting week, this options expiration week. And you know what's amazing out of everything that just transpired? We're still in balance on the weekly and still in balance on the daily. All we did was stretch the balance low on the daily today and got close to the balance high on the daily. That's it. Now, buy is the way we close. They're giving themselves an opportunity on Monday to try to come out of the daily balance to the upside. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that will happen. We go out with a triple distribution day. Yes, we had single prints in L, one tick in I to triple distribution. So if by some chance we open a side of value on Monday, everything they accomplished goes out the window and this balance is still up for grabs. I mean, think about it. We stretched the balance to the downside today and just missed the balance to the upside. So anything's really on the table. And when we come out of the daily balance, we then have to deal with the weekly balance, which I'll show you on the charts. Triple Qs also go out with a triple distribution day. Oh, one other thing I forgot. We had an outside day up in Triple Qs and in the ES and SPY. Russell goes out with only a double distribution. They filled L singles late. They did have a triple, but they filled them, and they never took out yesterday's high. So how important is an outside day up? Well, we had an outside day down yesterday, and what happened? Not much. Uh, initially, it looked like we were going to go a lot lower this morning with a gap until uh, some Fed observer made the comment <laughs> that, you know, 75 basis points in November and maybe 50 in December and the market obviously took that as uh, some good news. But we did open after that comment. Again, I don't believe it's the news that does anything. Because we did open lower and we did take out the balance low. We never got the overnight low, but we took out the balance low. And we found, what did we find with all of the balance low? Crickets. And once you don't get anything and come back into balance, the odds are to go to the other end of balance. Now, do I expect that in one day? Of course not. But we did it, and it's a $12 balance. So I don't take that it's anything that somebody said this morning, right? Because after he said it, the market did make lows um, on the week, okay? They did make new lows on the week in a period prior to going up. This was a tough week, but I had a good week. I played very small for the most part. Um, was in and out real quick. Let me tell you, you had to be in and out real quick. I did not. I didn't do much in this afternoon, and I'm frustrated. You know, this this was an absolute grind up. This market after E stopped the one time framing down, we then one time framed up, starting an F the entire afternoon and didn't stop. We didn't stop. You know, it looked so easy, and somebody in my room said, "Hey, you know what? This has been easy. All I'm doing is buying the dip," and you know. And all kidding aside, I said, you're a better man than me. I didn't do that. I really didn't. I had a good day, but I didn't do much in the afternoon at all. Um, because you look at this profile and you say, wow, look at that. It's just straight up. But it was such a grind at times. Uh, that's one of my hardest days. They really are. I've talked about that. I said I wanted to get better at it this year, but we haven't had many of them this year. We've had the days I like more than these days, which is the trend days down, which move a hell of a lot faster. But, you know, I had a good week P&L-wise. Um, I think we did okay reading the market. It was not an easy market to read this week. And we got so much coming up in the next couple of weeks with more earnings, the Fed, and the midterms. So, man, get your rest this weekend. All right, as far as my trades. So I took a loss uh, on the first trade of the day. Um, I took a quick short against the overnight high. Saw that wasn't going to work. Took that off uh, for a loss. I then flipped to the long side in B period when it looked like we might have single prints and played the ebb and flow. I did okay on that. Then in D, I didn't do anything in C. In D period, and it looked like we were going to uh, roll back over again and maybe one time frame down. So I took a short. And as soon as I did that, it paid nicely. We couldn't get to the opening. I reversed and took a long to go back to Pac. And here's another spectacular thing. We got five wide in D, never raised it, never moved it. Our volume Pac in ES did not move up to the last second of the day. That's why volume Pac is so, um, I don't think it's reliable compared to uh, TPO. I just don't, 
right? Look at the volume part. Got moved all the way up here finally in SPY and in ES. I don't know. That's just how I look at it. But anyway, that was a good trade in D. Then in E period, got long again. I'm like, I'm going to innovate this. I think they're going to stop the one-time framing down. Boom, pop the top. Then in F period, I took a short thinking there's not going to be any single prints. It wasn't really coming in. We actually started with singles. I took it off for a loss. And then my last two trades of the day were in J period. So I thought J was going to finally go get this overnight pock. So I got long at 54, a one lot. Started coming in. I got long, I think, at 46. And then it was like, they're going to go fill these singles. Now, technically, we didn't. But what I did was I reversed and I went short seven mini. So I went, took out the two long and went short five mini at 45 and actually got a quick three points out of it. So net, net, I ended up basically breaking even on that trade. Obviously, I should have just held on to the long because we didn't stop the one time framing down and I would have gotten paid in L and M. But at that point, it just didn't look like they wanted to hold trend. And if they didn't hold trend, I thought these longs would give it up. They never did. So I don't have a problem. It's a little frustrating, but I don't have a problem. So that's um, how my trading ended on the day. Now we did price probe, but not enough. I want a price probe of probably 40, 50 cents away from the previous high to use that like L's high today. Otherwise it's kind of useless. As far as destinations now, for the upside <clears throat> in um, SPY, we have 374.80 daily high. 375.45 weekly high, which is also our daily balance high. Keep this, it might be a little bit confusing. Then we have 376.31 afternoon rally high from October 6th, 378.72 daily high, and then 379.46, which is a weekly high, and that's the top of our weekly balance. For the downside, we have the single prints. They start at 370.387 and get filled at 36. The second set started at 372.03, get filled at 371.99. G, ES had a poor low. Now, SPY had a poor low also, but it did take out F's low by a penny. I'm going to use that as just a reference point of 369.24 as a pullback. And then today's low, which is a weekly low and our weekly daily balance low of 363.54. NES, for the upside, we have 69.50, daily high, 77 and a quarter weekly high, 78.10 wide from October 6th. For the downside, single prints, 59.50 to 54.75. Then we have that one tick down at 41. Today's low, which is a weekly low of 55.50. And then 91 and a quarter, which is a daily low. Now, I know it's going to be a little longer. But I hope you guys and gals like these videos. I put a lot of time and effort into them. They're free. Really try to help people on here um, understand the market. Thank you for the likes and subscribing. Again, come check us out. It's $30 a month. I'm seriously considering going to $40 a month for new people in January. So again, come check us out for two months. If you like it, you stay, and it's always going to be $30. If you don't, it costs you 60 bucks. Seriously, right? Get a good education. Okay, <clears throat> let me get my voice. Let's go to the charts. So let's start with the little engine, right? IWM, we always start with that one. We're firmly in balance in the monthly, okay? We're in a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven months, three, four, six month. We're in a six month balance. We keep testing the lows of it, right? It's like a chicken pecking you to death. However, <clears throat> we keep, you know, holding. Remember that 173.39 level? Here it is. That's August of 18. We closed just below it again. We can't get away from this level. Two years to get back over it. Then we spend November of 2020 until May of 22 to stay over it, right? So that's what? A year and a half or whatever? Only now to be battling it the last six, five or six months. Balance on the Russell on the monthly. Weekly, balance. It's a five-week balance, okay? <clears throat> the high of it is the week of the 19th, 181.10. Last week, which is the yearly low, is the low of it. That's your weekly balance. So balance on the weekly. And daily, guess what? Balance, okay? 
It's a three, I would call uh, Russell a three-day balance. All right? I would call it a three-day balance. So all three time frames in Russell are in uh, balance. That is a market looking for more MGI. I can tell you that much. Triple Qs, <clears throat> monthly, down, right? No balance on this monthly, down for two months. One-time framing down. Weekly, balance. It's a four-week balance, okay? The week of October 3rd is the high of it, 284.18. Last week's low of 254.26 is the bottom of it. It's a $30 balance. So you're going to see now on, on, on Q's, just like SPY, Q's balance high on the weekly is still <clears throat> above us by $7. The daily is in balance also, but the balance high is a lot lower. The balance high on the daily is only 277.21. So you're in a four-day balance on the daily, a four-week balance on the weekly, They've gone back and forth through the 20-day moving average this entire four-day balance. So the monthly is down. The weekly is balanced. The daily is balanced with an outside day up. And then the big boy, SPY and ES, monthly down. Now, I think this line could come into play here if we come out of balance to the upside meaning taking out both the daily and the weekly balance, we can and should go test. This high is about 380, somewhere, between, say between 383, 385. I certainly think we can get there possibly if we get above it. But right now the monthly is down. The weekly is a four-week balance, right? 379.46 is the high of it. Last week's low of the yearly low, 348.11 is the bottom. $31 balance. That's a big balance, my friends. Now, what's important about 379.46? Not only is it a weekly balance high, but let's go to the daily now. That's our last lowest high that I've been talking about. And I said I don't think it's going to hold. So, will we get out of this four-day daily balance to go test the weekly balance high and get above that to get a new lower a high. Remember I said we uh, we can test maybe 383, 384 in the monthly? Guess what? If we do that to get our next lower high, we would be taking out this trend line, at least to start. So that could be a little interesting, right? Things could get a little interesting. But again, nothing changes. And I mean nothing until we come out of both the weekly, well, first the daily, the daily balance and the weekly balance, okay? The volume today was excellent. We had 127 million already with the after hours. And now, what could propel or what could derail these balances? Well, the big question is, are we going to come out of these balances prior to more big earnings next week? But not even that. That's not the big one to me. I don't care about Google, Apple, Amazon, then, you know, that's individual stocks, yes. But the two big things that are going to move this market either out of this balance to the upside or downside will be the Fed meeting the first week in November and then the midterm elections that following Tuesday. Again, if Democrats control what they've been, this market's not going to like it, I don't think, and we could roll over again. If the Republicans take over and they sense gridlock for the next two years, that can make the market kind of happy. And maybe we do pop pretty good out of not only the daily balance, but the weekly balance to the upside. I hope all this helps. I really enjoyed doing it. Rest up. I hope you had a great week trading. Thank you again for everything, um, people in my room and people who might soon join my room. Enjoy your weekend, and we'll speak prior to the opening on Monday.